I've been pastoring here in Gander uh, for about 19 years. I've been pastoring in total for about 25 years. It's hard to believe that. If I could be totally honest, pastoring or anything to do with church, I think I, it's safe to say that that was the furthest thing from my mind. I grew up in a little town called uh, Birchie Bay in central Newfoundland, and uh, church was a big part of life. It was a big part of our, uh, of our community, and it seemed like the majority of people in our community attended some church, and so did we. Um, I remember attending church uh, all the time, whether that was a Sunday morning service or a Sunday evening uh, or a kids ministry or youth ministry. It seemed like we always attended church, but it was something that I endured. It wasn't something that I enjoyed. Uh, I endured it. And... Um, wasn't something that I liked attending. I didn't, I didn't like, um, I guess, what was expected of me. I didn't like the fact that I had to dress up. I didn't like the fact of, you know, I had to attend these long services. And uh, I didn't appreciate the music. And so there's a lot of things about church life growing up that I did not enjoy, and I endured them. Uh, so like I said, the thought of giving my life to that was the, really the furthest thing from my mind. Um, growing up, I was extremely shy. I mean, very shy. So much so that I couldn't even carry on a conversation with someone. I remember walking up the street, walking up the road, and, uh, and if someone was walking towards me, I'd walk out in the woods or I'd walk down the beach just to try and avoid them. That's how shy I was. And, and that was always a big struggle for me. Um, my self-esteem was always a big struggle. And uh, it seemed like you know, once I hit junior high, um, things began to get worse. And that shyness, it kind of turned into isolation. Then that isolation turned into depression. And, uh, and that was my biggest struggle, was my self-esteem. You know, teenagers, a lot of them struggle with, uh, you know, drug use or alcohol. That was never the thing that I struggled with. My biggest struggle was how I felt about myself. It was my insecurity. It was depression. It was isolation. For years, um, the thoughts of um, harming myself or uh, even thoughts of suicide would seem to consume my mind. And as you can imagine, uh, you know, someone who was feeling this way, um, I was very quick, very fast uh, to turn the tables on God. And I would blame him. I, I blame God for making me the way that I was. I, I, w I was always smaller than, any, than, than everyone else. I was shorter. Uh, I was that kid who was always picked last uh, for every team. And I always blame God for making me the way that I was. And during all of that time, I still attended church. I was still forced to go. And uh, I remember one night in uh, youth ministry, I was, um, I was 16 years of age. I was in grade 11. It was a Wednesday night, and I remember that youth night for the very first time, I had an encounter, an experience with God for the very first time in my entire life. And it was that night that I made a decision to live for Jesus. I made a, I made a decision that night to, to really give God a chance, to really have a personal relationship with Him. And even though I did that, um, I still had struggles. I, 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 still, I still fell, I still made mistakes. I, I still messed up a lot in my walk with him. And the following year in grade 12, I was, I was trying to make a decision. So I was, I was 17 years of age and I was trying to make a decision like a lot of grade 12 students were at the time, uh, trying to decide what am I gonna do with the rest of my life. And honestly, there was always this thought of, Maybe God was calling me to ministry, that God was calling me to some sort of ministry, and I, and I didn't really know what that was like or what that would look like. I mean, you think about it. What kind of ministry is there for someone like me who, uh, who was extremely shy, who couldn't carry on a conversation with anyone, and the thought of getting up in front of anyone just scared me to no end. I remember being in math class. It was Mr. Harris's math class that I made that decision to finally say yes, to say yes to what God was calling me to do. I had no idea what that looked like. I still had no idea. 
But I knew it was a step of faith, faith and so I did that. I, so I took a step of faith and uh, I made that decision that day in Mr. Harris's math class to, uh, to apply for Bible college. And so I did. I applied for Bible college. I got accepted. And so that summer leading up to, uh, to leaving, I had no plans, but a friend of mine mentioned to me about a summer camp at Manuel's called Circle Square Ranch. Now, I remember growing up uh, hearing about Circle Square Ranch because they had a TV show on. I remember seeing that television program. And, uh, but I had no idea that uh, there was actually a camp uh, here in Newfoundland. So I applied, I went, took a little leap of faith, had no idea what to expect. And so I went to the camp and I remember that very first week, the very first week of, of uh, staff training. I remember walking in with all of these people. There's probably about, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 staff members. And, uh, and they, begin to, they begin to sing songs and they begin to uh, act in skits. And they were acting silly. They were having so much fun. And so you can, as you can imagine, this guy who was really shy was watching all of these people acting silly, acting crazy, having campfires and, and just doing fun stuff. And I did not fit in at all. I thought to myself, these guys, all of them, every single one of them have lost their mind. They're, 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 they're crazy. And, um, and, I re and I remember thinking to myself, this place is definitely not for me. I think in the first two days, I think I called my parents and I said, uh, you got to come and get me. I, I, I don't think I can stay here. A friend of mine was feeling the same way. We we're both from the small town of Birch Bay and, and we we're both saying like, we got to get out of here. Like these guys are crazy, but we stuck it out. We stayed there for the rest of the week into the following week and something began to change in my life. I began to uh, I began to connect with what was happening. I began to sing these songs and I began to act at these skits and and before long I was probably uh, maybe one of the craziest ones there. And so this time and this ministry kind of broke me open. This shell that I always had around me it seemed to crack and break open and and I began to experience something new in my life. And I can look back at my life and I can say. Uh, pretty confidently that Circle Square Ranch, this camp ministry for kids, changed my life. It changed the trajectory of what I was going to do. And so I went to Bible College, and every single summer I'd go back to camp. So after the second year, I'd go back to camp. Uh, third year, I went back to camp. And when I went back after that year, uh, they actually asked me to stay on as program director and so uh, here I was, I mean, think back. I did not want to be there. I thought these people were crazy. And now two years later, I was leading them. I was the one leading this ministry. And so, like I said, I look back over my life and I look back over this experience and this changed my life uh, forever. So I graduated Baba College. I came back to Newfoundland. I worked at a group home for a year. I volunteered at church downtown for about, for about a year. And uh, after that year was up, uh, I was given an opportunity uh, to, to go and youth pastor at a church here in Newfoundland. It was incredible. So what I did is that I began to apply the things that I learned at camp ministry, and I began to apply that to, to youth ministry. And within the first few months, we seen a youth ministry uh, that was pretty much dying. And it just turned around and began to have life, and we, we began to see growth in the in the youth ministry and the children's ministry. And so things were going great, but the whole church life was still a struggle for me. I still struggle with church. I still struggle with, uh, I guess, traditionalism. And, and, and it was always a struggle. And I couldn't, if I could be totally honest, I think people really struggle with me. <laughs> and so I pastored uh, for, about, um, for about five years before moving to Ganner. And I've been here in Ganner, like I said, now for about 19 years. So I youth pastored here for about eight years, and then I transitioned into a different position. And when I transitioned into this different position, there was more opportunities that, uh, that, that opened up, and this program was one of them, one of those opportunities. So that was a big leap of faith. And I remember those early days, oh my goodness. Uh, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, absolutely none. I knew a little tiny bit about uh, editing, uh, very limited. So here I was now, I was thrown into developing a, a local program. And I remember so many times that I felt like I was in way over my head. 
I felt like quitting. I felt like running. I can't keep doing this. And because remember, I was still pastoring. I was still, I was still doing pastoral work. And so on top of this, I felt a little, a little overwhelmed. And there's a lot of times that I really wanted, I really wanted to quit, but I didn't. And we stuck it out. And it's hard to believe as I look back that it's been 10 years this year that we have been sharing stories on this program to the entire province about what God is doing. And I think back to those times when I wanted to quit. <laughs> I wanted to run. I even think back to when I was a teenager of, I wanted to quit church. <laughs> I think back to the times when at Circle Square, I wanted to run, I wanted to quit. I think about in my early years of church ministry, how I felt like I didn't fit, how I, how I felt like I was a, a round peg in a, in a square hole. So many times I wanted to quit, but we didn't. And that's the reason why we're here today. And that's the reason why we're celebrating 10 years today. That's the reason why we're, we're celebrating all of the incredible things that God has been doing around our province. And it's kind of like we have a front row seat to all of the incredible things that God is doing in Newfoundland and Labrador. And I think back to, you know, the, some of the mission trips that we've done here and, and, and the lives that have been impacted and people have been changed. And I think back to our ride for hope and the connection that we have in our community. And I think back to orphanages that we built and the schools that we built. And, and I think back to the impact of probably thousands of lives that have been impacted. And I think back all to all those times when I just felt like throwing in the towel and I felt like I didn't fit into, into church ministry. And you know, I think there may be some of you who are watching here today that you feel like you don't fit in church, just like I did. And maybe you feel like God is calling you to something, but you're not quite sure what that looks like. And you're thinking to yourself, how can I fit into what God is calling me to do? I don't have the skills. I don't have the talent. I, um, I'm not really wired for uh, what I think God is calling me towards. But I want to encourage you today. Don't quit. Don't give up. God is calling you to something greater. God, is, God is, has an incredible purpose for your life. And I think, just like me, if you would just embrace what God has for your life, I think the journey that God has for your life will blow your mind.